Welcome to BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. We're talking today to Saranga Chandratilika, who's uh, the founder of Blinks, the uh, video and content platform, uh, doing our Turing lecture with the IT as well, uh, later on today, although of course the audience won't know that. But <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you uh, first of all, Saranga, just to tell us a little bit about Blinks. Sure. Um, Blinks is a a video search engine, that's really where we started. Um, and what that means is that we have a technology uh, solution mm -hmm. that allows us to index the internet, so crawl the web all over the web, looking for video files. And what we do is, what our technology does is when it finds those video files, um, it analyzes the video based on things like speech recognition and visual analysis. So the computers can really build up a very accurate picture of what all these videos are about. Um, we then use that information to populate a really large index mm -hmm. um, of information. So when you come along to blinks.com or one of the sites that we power behind the scenes and you type in a search looking for any topic you can imagine, um, we'll find videos that match that topic really accurately. Um, so that's the core idea, it's mm -hmm. matching people and their interests to videos from around the web that are relevant to that. Um, but then what we've done as a business is take that concept and sort of broaden it in various directions. So we, not, we no, no, no longer just power video search, but sometimes we power video recommendation. So if you're on okay. certain sites, you might stumble across a video that our engine has found for you. Mm -hmm. We also use it for advertising. So you can use the same technology to be able to match the most relevant ad into the most relevant video as well. So if you start playing a video, we'll hopefully find a, an ad that's useful and interesting to you, but also valuable for the advertiser as well. Is that a main part of your business, the advertising side? Or? It's the way we make the money. Yeah. So um, the technology is the heart of what we do, if you will, the, the mm. sort of very core of what we do. Um, the video search and video recommendation and so on is sort of the utility we provide to our audience and our users. But the way that we turn all of that into money, the, the way it's a business, uh, is through the advertising. So what, um, um, from the techie perspective, well, obviously our audience yep. are IT professionals, uh, makes your uh, search functionality for video a little bit different? Really this ability to um, understand the video content itself. Mm. So everybody else who tries to crack video search generally uses the metadata that exists yeah. around the video. So this could be the title, the description, the tags, that kind of thing. Um, and it's pretty good. I mean, you know, the tag and title tend to be correlated to what the video itself is about, sure. of course. Um, but it's not perfect. One problem you get is it's often incomplete. So people will use a sentence or two to describe a three or four minute video, which mm. is clearly not capturing everything that's going on in the video. And other people will actually sometimes, you know, be slightly nefarious in their tagging and, and maybe tag things or yeah. topics that, you know, aren't really covered in the video because it might attract more views, for example. Um, so we help to negate both those effects by having this very in-depth understanding of what's really going on inside the content. I'd imagine most people are happy to have their videos indexed from the point of view of views, but have you run into problems with, with IP and that sort of thing? No, not really at all, because um, as you say, you know, people, if you're putting video online, that's presumably because you want people to watch it, yeah. as many people as possible. So um, you know, being indexed by a search engine only ha helps that. In your view, what, what's next in digital entertainment? So many things flooding in on us, aren't there, all the time? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> there are many, many aspects to, or many ways of answering that question, of course. But from our world and our perspective, I think the thing that's most interesting is the sort of um, burgeoning reality of you know, what people call the four screen experience. So the fact that um, increasingly the services and applications you use live on the cloud somewhere or in the internet somewhere and as a result you can access them from really any screen that you would normally come across um, which today certainly includes your phone your tablet your pc um, and also your television um, mm. and increasingly it will be even newer devices things like augmented reality glasses or you know um, other types of display um, and what's exciting about that is that the ability for us to track you across all these different devices is improving a lot so we can make sure that you get a seamless content experience wherever you are so just to give you a very simple example of that at blinks we just launched a new version of our website um, and <clears throat> the way the site works is that if you were you know, commuting on the bus on your way back home and you're watching a video on the Blinks.com site, mm -hmm. um, when you get to your stop, you can hit pause, get off the bus, go into your house, and you can then um, turn on your connected TV and the screen will actually be frozen at exactly the same frame that you had on your phone. So you can just hit play and seamlessly start watching on a different screen. And that kind of ability to sort of have the technology you know, bend to your lifestyle and where you are and what you're doing um, I think is part of what's going to make entertainment a lot of fun going forward. And do you think there'll be uh, more in the way of immersive entertainment, um, like completely surround screens or the 3D? How do you think all that's going to go? Yeah, I think, I think there is definitely a place for that. But I also think it's more going to be about bringing entertainment to you wherever you are. Mm. Um, so, for example, you know, um, 
smartphones for me are a great example of this. There are lots of games that you can play on smartphones now that are games that we all played, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. You know, so in that sense, things haven't progressed at all. Mm. What's changed is now you can play them at the bus stop or, yeah. you know, in your car or, you know, wherever you happen to be. Um, and I think that's, the, so there's two, two halves to that, to that story. That there's, yes, newer experiences, more immersive experiences, more complete experiences, which will allow us to experience things that we simply couldn't experience before, 3D things, immersive things, augmented reality things, for example. Um, but on the flip side, there's all this stuff that is actually quite simple stuff, but now you can access it wherever you want to, which is yeah. in itself quite exciting. Yeah. Now for us um, as BCS, you bring together some quite important things because you're an entrepreneur, <coughs> which is something that we've got a burgeoning community in, sure. and you've got a base in computer science, of course, yeah, which, is, of course. which is incredibly important to us. How do you keep up with the computer science stuff now that you've got a very successful large business going? <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's really important, first of all. You know, mm. um, someone said, and I, I'll be saying again in my lecture today, that, you know, um, innovation um, is, is you know, is the product in technology businesses. Um, and, you know, what that means is that if you stop innovating, you know, then you don't have a product anymore and mm. you become irrelevant incredibly rapidly. Um, you can't have this mentality of we build, you know, we innovate to build this one product and then we switch most modes and start selling that product and that's all we do. If you do that, you'll be successful for six months and then you'll die. You know? yeah. um, so, so keeping up to date with the technology is critical for not just me personally, but for the entire of our business um, and really everyone in it. You know? And even the people we have who come from a totally non-technology background, you know, people in the marketing team, the sales team and so on, I actually encourage that they get very involved in technology, and I, I poke fun at them at them if they if they aren't up to date with those things because they sort of need to be, you know, because well, that's right, the business yes. we're in, you know. Mm. Um, so for all those reasons, it's very important to do that. Um, the way you do it, I think, is I mean, certainly for me, it's a variety of methods. Um, I get all of the great publications that the BCS puts out, and Excellent. that's you know that's a very simple way to keep <laughs> abreast of at least broadly what's going on in the industry. Um, and I do that with similar other publications too, you know, mm. some of which are associated you know with certain organisations, but many of which which are just free publications. And I think that's, it's interesting, my day-to-day -day job doesn't involve the technology as much anymore. Mm. Um, I'm not coding anymore. Um, but knowing the way that's working and the way it's all going is as important as it ever was. Um, so yeah, so keeping abreast is critical. Lovely. Now, um, looking at the entrepreneur side then, uh, yeah. as I say, we've, we've got a sort of um, a growing group in that area. What, what sort of tips and advice would you give to people that are looking at this and think, thinking, well, Saranga, yeah. that's the way to go? Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? <coughs> Um, so the the biggest tip I would give, or the biggest piece of advice I give, is, is give it a go. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think um, we're very very lucky um, to be in this. You know, for people who are members of the BCS to be in this sort of computing um, ecosystem where there is a lot of opportunity for doing this sort of thing. Um, there are a lot of people who will provide you with the funding you need to go and try it. Mm. And I think there is little downside to it, frankly, for most of us. Um, you know, it, I think the biggest stumbling block that I come across people uh, with people, and this is what my lecture will be about today, um, is really almost a psychological stumbling block built around the fact that they feel like there's something special about being a business person rather than a technology person that they don't know about, that somehow they need to get skills on. Mm. Um, of course, there's bits of information and skills and knowledge you will need to sort of adopt over the time to be a successful business person, but none of it is actually that complex. None of it is really that mysterious. All of it is very available online mm. for free. Um, so really, you know, what I find is that technologists are already very prepared intellectually um, for the challenge of being a business person, and all that's really required is you know, sort of self-belief that you yeah. can do it um, because that's what will then spur you into actually getting going out there and getting it done um, you know it's too easy to think of them as being separate things but they're really they're really not they're all very related and especially if you're a professional computing person less than say an academic computing person yeah I think you probably already know most of what you need um, you just maybe don't realize it or maybe you don't feel you do um, and so my advice is you know go out there start it um, you know inch forward every time you hit a, a wall of things you don't know about Google it, you know, mm. you, I bet you'll find what you need to know surprisingly yeah. quickly. Absolutely. Um, so that's the, that's the big message I keep going around preaching, you know, it's, it's not as hard as you think, it's not as difficult or complex or esoteric as you think, um, you're probably quite good at this, um, so if you want to try it, just try it and see how far you get. Um, one last thing, thank you for very much for speaking sure. to us today, um, are you surprised with how quickly and how well it's worked out for you, do, do you sort of 
pull yourself up short and think, oh, this is excellent. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I, I don't think of it as something that's happened very quickly. No, right, okay. <laughs> it's taken me at least... Um, Perhaps that's my perspective. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, you know, certainly from my perspective, um, you know, I've been in the States now for 10 years um, pursuing sort of this sort of thing. And before that, I was here in the UK for about five years doing mm. similar things. Um, and so, you know, um, it's taken a long time, I think, to, to get Blink to the state that it is today, where it's a you know, half a billion dollar company that's profitable and mm. growing and all those things. Um, so it takes time. Um, but I, but then I guess, you know, when you consider to get, getting to that scale in any, in, any other industry, it's pretty difficult. Mm. And the reason why you can do that in our industry is because, you know, we are, you know, technology, you know, and innovation is the agent of change right yeah. now. It's what it's what's making everything. It's it's what's breaking everything that came before and building everything that's coming soon. And that's very exciting. Yeah. And that applies to me and my business, but it also applies to, frankly, everyone who's a member of the BCS and everything that they're doing because they're all part of that wave of change themselves, um, which is very cool. You know, mm. to use the Californian parlance. I mean, yeah. it's it it we we are privileged to be at the cutting edge of a very exciting wave that really is making a huge difference and, and we get to be the ones who know about it and talk about it and you know preach the change and, and live through it. Yeah. Um, that puts lots of pressures on us because you know we are anywhere where there's a lot of change going on, there's a lot of friction typically. Um, but I think as long as you can, you know, keep up your confidence and sort of, you know, positivity in these things, yeah. um, it's actually a really rewarding experience. Well that's certainly come off you. We've got your enthusiasm for that today. So Good. Uh, okay. Tanaka, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you. Great to meet you.